Welcome and good morning to morning prayer with the parish of Gerald and Simonside this Friday the 13th. Unlucky for some, but not for us, no. I hope you have had a restful sleep and you are ready for whatever today brings. I like to call it the Friday. <laughs> it has gone so fast. It is absolutely crazy how fast time goes. So this morning, the links should be, if you want to follow the liturgy, should be in the comments section above the top. Um, and if you are using your Bible, oh, hold on, good morning, Carol. Hope you're well rested this morning. Good morning, Tracy. Listen, I hope you're all nice and well rested, ready for the weekend. After very fun, exciting week. Yep. So, oh, good morning, Lorraine. If you are following the liturgy, you can see the link should be at the top somewhere. And if you're using your Bible, the passages that we will be using this morning are Psalm 55, and the Old Testicle Canticle is Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. And then the scripture reading is going to continue with Mark. Um, chapter 4, verses 21 to 34. Good morning, Carol. It's nice to have you all with us this morning. And I'd just like to say a warm welcome to anybody else who is there but not commenting, and those who will be joining us at a later date. That's the joy of Facebook Live. It's been safe for everybody else. Oh, good morning, Sunny. So, today in the church calendar, we are celebrating, there's two people, well, two people celebrating Jeremy T Taylor, which is one of the most influ influential, put my teeth back in, of the Caroline Divines, which was just a group of theologians who wanted a biblical Catholicity, I definitely need to put my teeth in this morning, rather than the Putin Protestantism that was going on. So basically they were committed to holy living, to prayer, preaching, and to the sacraments. The incarnation revealed in Christ was central and their devotional life was lived out in their pastoral service. And the second person that the church is commemorating today is Florence Nightingale, who is perhaps better known as the lady with the lamp panel. That's how I was taught about her in school. Um, she was a nurse, a social reformer, a statistician, and probably best known as the founder of modern day nursing. And hopefully you haven't got any sound issues this morning. I did do a couple of checks this morning to see, so I didn't have anything on my computer. So hopefully you are all fine as well, because I know it's not very nice to hear a little cackling noise going on sometimes. So as we just start, we're gathered all here today. What we'll do is we'll just light our candle. So Jesus is the light of the world. So this is Jesus. Is the light of the world. Oh, fantastic. I'm glad it sounds great there. Brilliant. <laughs> and good morning, Judith. I've not said good morning to you already. So let us just take oh, brilliant, a few moments just to still ourselves as we come to God this morning. Just breathe out anything that just might be kind of weighing down on you and just distracting you, not anything like any fears, any anger, frustration, anything like that, just let it go as you breathe out, just release it. As you breathe in, just breathe in all God's love, let his peace and his calm just wash over you, take it all away, just keep taking those really nice big breaths in and out, just keep going in and out. Just let ourselves be filled with peace and ready to meet God this morning in prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, 
creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, and in these last days, you have spoken to us. In your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, as we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we come to Psalm 55 this morning with the refrain, cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. Hear my prayer, O God. Hide not yourself from my petition. Give heed to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaining. I am alarmed at the voice of the enemy and at the glamour of the wicked. For they would bring down evil upon me and set against me in fury. My heart is disquieted with me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Then would I flee far away and make my lodging in the wilderness. I would make haste to escape from the stormy wind and tempest. Confuse their tongues, O Lord, and divide them, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about on her walls. Mischief and trouble are in her midst. Wickedness walks in her streets. Oppression and guile never leave her squares. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. For it was not an open enemy that reviled me, for then I could have borne it. Nor was it my adversary that puffed himself up against me, for then I would have hid myself from him. But it was even you, one like myself, my companion and my own familiar friend. We took sweet counsel together and walked with the multitude in the house of God. Let death come suddenly upon them. Let them go wicked down alive to the pit. For wickedness inhabits their dwellings, their very hearts. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord will deliver me. In the evening and morning and at noonday, I will pray and make my supplication, and he shall hear my voice. He shall redeem my soul in peace from the battle waged against me, for many have come upon me. God, who is a throne of old, will hear and bring them down. They will not repent. So they have no fear of God. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. 
my companion stretched out his hands against his friend and has broken his covenant. His speech was softer than butter. The wall was in his heart. His words were smoother than oil, yet they yet are they naked swords. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you, and will not let the righteous fall forever. But those that are bloodthirsty and deceitful, O oh God, you will bring down to the pit of destruction. They shall not live out half their days, but my trust shall be in you, O oh Lord. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. Lord, in all times of fear and dread, grant that we may so cast our burdens upon you, that you may hear us on the holy wings of the Spirit, to the stronghold of your peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Now this just brings us to our canticle in the Old Testament and it is Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 6 and it is a song of humility. And if you are following the liturgy at home, you can join in by saying the evening numbers if you so wish. And the refrain at the beginning and the end is, Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O oh, Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O oh Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn their might the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. This brings us to our scripture reading. It is Mark chapter 4, verses 21 to 34. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. He said to them, Is a lamp bought to be put under the bushel, basket or under the bed, and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given to you. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground. 
I would sleep and rise night and day, and this seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. When the grain is ripe at once, he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Of what parable will we use for it? Is it like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth? Yet when it is sown, it grows and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now let's just take a moment to reflect on what we have heard from scripture this morning. And if anything has stood out for you and you wish to share it, do please put it in the comments. And if not, that's fine. You just reflect on yourself to go through the day. Thank you for sharing that, Judith. She says, so our response, cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. Yeah, it can be really difficult sometimes, can't it, to let go. Sometimes we can, we hold on to things so tightly, it just kind of sits and it eats away at us and it knots. And just to be able to know that we have somebody that we can give it to, just to ease it. And then when we give that over, we're kind of left with that space where then God's love can fill us in his peace. And it is, he gives you that strength and that courage to get over, get over whatever it is that a burden is. And as Jesus says, his yoke is light. Yes, Tracy, so she's struggling with listening at the moment. Hopefully it's because I'm not too quiet. Um, but it says that he spoke as they were able to hear it. Maybe it's a hearing that's a problem, not the listening. And just realise that. Yeah, well, this kind of relates slightly back to what was the parable yesterday with um, in her just in morning prayer with the parables of the different grounds. Because of how is our heart? Are we ready to be able to hear things? Are we willing to kind of, we've got to prepare the ground, we've got to prepare our heart, it's got to be open. We've got to make sure that's our priority. And also sometimes we're not in a space that's right to listen. And God has his journey, his plans, and he it will work in his in his time. It is always on God's time. And as long as we're keeping our ears open and we're trying to understand, and we're wanting to enter into that relationship, I think we should be all right. I think it's when we stop listening, when we kind of let our ground, our heart kind of harden and become impossible, whether the, the seeds, the word of God can just kind of just bounce off. And that's that's not good. That's when we kind of miss out. And yes, the spoken parables, Carol, thank you. Yeah, the speaking in parables has so many different layers in there, and where you come to it and where you come from, depending on where you are, you will take a different understanding from that. But there is that universal truth that holds in it. 
Thank you for those. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, because there's a few parables in there today, isn't there? There's, there's the three. It's one after the other. And normally when you have a passage, you normally tend to have one good meaty one that you can kind of you get a bit of context in and you can kind of work through. But I think it kind of it all follows sorry. It follows in from yesterday's where the parable of the, the soil of the heart, it's kind of it's he was preparing them to be able to hear the word of God, to hear what he was saying. He was asking them to look at their heart to see how it was going. And today we've kind of been given the responsibility that we need to listen. Just as Tracy kind of picked up there, it was we need to truly listen, a deep listening. And when we do, it is a listening that leads to joyful obedience. Oh, Definitely, Carol, we definitely need a chance just to think things through. We can't just take things on the surface and just run with it. There's generally always something else. Yeah. Is it the value and truth of God that we're going through? Or is it our own personal human desires and wants that we're going for? Definitely. And it can be very difficult to listen sometimes, especially when we don't want to hear it. And God's asking us to go in a different direction to what we want. We can kind of go, oh, yeah. And it's kind of like the, the bushel and the lamp. In that parable, I'm kind of getting that Jesus is, in the word of God, there is that lamp. Generally, how many of us have got a Bible? And instead of putting that in prominence where we actually are reading it and we're listening and we're in relationship with that, and we're trying to put what it says into our practice, our lives, so we're living it, how many of us have just got on a shelf and don't touch it and it's just there? We're not doing anything with it. We're hiding the light. And it's the whole point of the light of Jesus of the world is to to illuminate and lighten and brighten the world. And we've got to expose it to all the hearts of all the people. And that kind of brings us into the parable of the, the good seed. What is to note there is that the sower must do the sowing. So we've got to kind of spread the word. This is Jesus is spreading the word. But in the same sense, the power is in the seed. It's not in the sower, it's in the seed. It is God at work in people's hearts. And we just got to trust that process and just allow God to work through it his own time. He is working that the Holy Spirit guide them. And all we've got to do is scatter those seeds and God will do the rest. We can't force anybody in anything else. It's their own choices as they kind of, they go through. Because the words of Jesus does change people, but we have got to give it time. It grows eventually and it grows slowly. It grows at its own time. As we heard in the reading, it's the first bit, then it comes through to fruition. And then that kind of brings us back to the parable of the mustard seed, which is probably one of the most known ones. I think we all kind of know the parable of the mustard seed. And this is again highlighting that the kingdom of God is from a small beginning, is really huge, it's going to get really big, it's great size. But what I like to notice there is kind of the tree. Who is going to enjoy that tree? And it's every bird of every kind that can join and sit and rest in that tree. So what that's telling us there is that God's kingdom is open for everyone, of all kinds, shapes, everything. Every sort of bird, every kind can nest and find shelter in that, in God's tree, in God's kingdom. And that's where we go out spreading God's word, scattering the seed, illuminating it for all the seed. So they all can come to know God's kingdom in their own time. And I think the challenge for me today, if on this parable, is if we are willing to listen and to engage with Jesus, so that we may understand him better and draw closer to God through him. So let us respond with scripture from Psalm 38. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. 
be not far from me, O oh my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O oh Lord, be not far from me, O oh my God. And as we come to the Gospel Canticle, it is the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. And again, if you are following the liturgy at home, please do join in with the Benedictus. <clears throat> and the refrain at the beginning and the end is, you show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to your ancestors and remember your holy covenant. So we have come to our time of intercession. So let's just take a moment to be still. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for those people who are bold enough to challenge and change the status quo because they see the greater value. For the pioneers like Florence Nightingale, who lit her light for the world to see, to bring comfort to the wounded. Let our light be rekindled so that we may burn brightly for all to see to walk our own paths of service to the world for your kingdom. Lord Jesus, who heal the sick and give them new life, be with the doctors, nurses, carers, and all those who work with the NHS as they act as agents of your healing touch. May they always have your loving compassion. In the desperate times, clothe them in your strength. Be with them in their weariness and in their tears. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will support and encourage them, especially when they are physically or emotionally exhausted. May they know the strength of your healing love. And God of hope, may you protect those who are putting themselves at risk as they attend to the needs of others. Please comfort, guide them and uphold them. We pray for all those searching for new medical insights. Give them your understanding and wisdom and may they know your resilience. Lord, may they all have access to the resources that they need 
in order to do their job safely and to the best of their ability. Be with them, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace and mercy, help us to stay present, to be prayerful and compelled to action. We pray for all those who feel the pangs of hunger pains, the despair of not knowing when or if their next mouthful, mouthful is coming. We lift up to you those who are struggling in our community. May you provide them with the food and resources that they need to not only survive, but to thrive and to grow. We give you thanks for all those who are graciously donating their time, gifts and provisions. We pray that you guide our leaders. May your Holy Spirit inspire them to share resources, that justice and equality will flow through their decision making, that the needs of all are met. For you have so richly blessed the world with abundant resources. Guide our hands, O oh Lord, so that our farming, the production and distribution of the world's precious resources are not wasted. And we lift to you all those organisations who are helping their communities and beyond. And we lift to you especially the Holiday Club, all those involved and all those in the parish of Jarrow and Simonside. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithfulness. May we live always in your presence. We give thanks for your church. May we offer to you our worship and our work. Give us the courage to continuously strive to know you. Give us the strength to cast our burdens onto you, O oh Lord, for you will sustain us. O oh, loving God, we thank you for all those who serve your church. We pray especially for Archbishop Justin and Stephen and Bishops Paul and Sarah. We pray that you will give them wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, and patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. And we, may we, as this church community, follow the example set before us by Bishop Jeremy Taylor, May we come to know you closer through prayer and live a life of devotion to you through our service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of quiet, please bring before God all that is on your hearts this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring before you all who suffer, 
especially those who ailments are concealed. Pour out your healing love upon them. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. O oh God, be not far from us. And we lift to you all those who are suffering in mind, body or spirit and all those being cared for in our parish, especially. John Ellison, Jessica McCaskill, Carrie Waggett, Doreen Moig, Andrew Cavock, Mrs Hewitt, Sid Harrison, Pat Middleton, Dorothy Macbeth, Stella Matthews, Michael Hughes, Chris Haynes, John Pike, Anne Taylor, Rod Taylor, Carol Woodfield, Christine, Beatrice Houston, Wynne Adelslade, Gillian, Mavis, Grant Macbeth, Susan Fisher, Ruth Banks, James Shepherd, Marjorie Carruthers, Brian Henderson, Anne Henderson, Brenda Prophet, Stan, Gary, Jim, Joan Thurburn, Ashton, Marion, Betty Hall, Isla Muhammad, Gary Patterson, Jonathan Hall, June Barris, Irene McConaughey, Judith, Derek Yuston, Tracy, Valerie, Tony, Lisa, Michelle, George Dunn, Justine, and for all those people on our hearts today. We pray that in the midst of their suffering and pain, you will bear upon them on the wings of your spirit to the stronghold of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, behold in your presence all those who are receiving end of life care, all their friends and family, and those who are caring for them. May they know your comforting presence at this difficult time and may they draw solace and strength from you. And we also pray for those who have died recently. May they find love and peace in your presence. And we pray by name for the repose of the souls of Ronnie Smith, Anne Stevenson, Frankie Dunn, Gary Stevenson and Adam Dunn. And we pray for all those who are forever changed by grief and loss. We commend them in your eternal care. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect of the day. Holy and loving God, you dwell in the human heart and make us partakers of the divine nature in Christ, our great high priest. Help us who remember your servant, Jeremy Taylor, to put trust in your heavenly promises and follow a holy life in virtue and true godliness. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you ever so much for joining us this morning in worship. It has been an absolute pleasure. I hope you have a really good weekend. and You've had a good week so far. Um, today there will be Munch Holiday Club at St Peter's on York Avenue from 11 till 3. There will be a light lunch, a few craft activities and the stagecoach productions are there. They did Cinderella on Monday, so who knows what wonderful things they've got up their sleeve for today. So do look out for the Red Gazebo and pop along, it would be great to see you. Um, the next service will be on Sunday at each of the churches. We've got St John's on Nain Avenue at the Scotch Estate at nine o'clock in person. You've got St Peter's on York Avenue at quarter past nine, that's also in person. And St Simon's on Wenlock Road, Simon's Side, that's 11 o'clock in person. And St Paul's at Church Bank, Jarrow beside Jarrow Hall, is also at 11 o'clock. That is in person and that one will also be live streamed. So again, please do join us in whatever way that you can. And I'm really wishing you an absolutely wonderful weekend, whatever it may bring. And as we go out today, may our hearts burn brightly for all to see as we walk a path of loving service, scattering seeds on people's hearts as we go. Thank you ever so much. <laughs>